So given that the households uh, behave in a way that's very similar in our two market model compared to the basic model, we don't really need to spend time thinking about households and uh, how to solve the household problem. Um, everything is going to be essentially the same as in the basic model. Um, firms, on the other hand, it's a completely new uh, part of these two market models. So we need to look a little bit at uh, how firms operate and we'll also try to figure out how firms behave. Um, so first thing that I want to talk about is the recruiting process in firms, how firms conduct their recruiting. Because uh, we said that firms pose vacancies to try to recruit workers. Um, so let's look into that uh, in a little bit more detail uh, to see how the recruiting works, because that's completely new in these two market model. Um, so <clears throat> firms, They are recruiting. Um, so here we can um, we can think of a representative firm. Uh, you know, all the firms here. You know, we can think that there is a, a unit mass uh, of firms. All the firms are exactly the same. Um, there is no heterogeneity. So we can think of a representative firm. So our firm, our, our representative firm is recruiting um, L workers um, by posting V hat vacancies and um, the key question here is, um, you know, to understand the gap between the num number of workers that are recruited and the number of workers who will actually be productive. And there's a gap here between these two things because a, a share of the workers in the firms are actually um, allocated to recruiting. And so because we have these recruiters in the firms who are in charge of uh, managing uh, the vacancies and managing the recruiting process, there'll be a gap between the total number of workers paid by the firm and the number of workers that are uh, that are actually productive. And so we need to figure out what is that gap and we'll use the same formalism as in the product market. We'll try to compute a wedge, um, a matching wedge that will uh, tell us what is, the, you know, for one worker who will end up being a producer, this matching wedge is going to tell us how many extra workers you need to um, look after the vacancies, you know, on a per producer basis. Um, so let's try to figure this out. So here our goal is we are going to compute matching wedge. And this matching wedge would use the same notation as on the product market. It's going to be tau hat and it's going to depend on the labor market tightness and it's going to be the, the, the wedge, the gap between number of producers and the number <coughs> of employees in the firm. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, um, oh, and so the number of producers is denoted by N, the number of employees is L. So the number of employees, so we know that employees, you have two types of employees. So number of employees is number of producers plus number of recruiters. So that's the key thing. And in fact, um, we can highlight it. This is a key relationship that uh, we use all the time, but that's of course a bit that's specific to the matching uh, model in other models with say monopolistic competition or perfect competition on the labor market, you don't have this idea of recruiters because firms don't have to post vacancies to get workers. So number of employees, that's L. Number of producers, that's N. Number of recruiters, how many recruiters uh, we need? Well, that's the number of vacancies, V hat, times the number of recruiters per vacancy. That's the parameter rho hat. Okay. Um, 
Um, so this we can rewrite it as n is equal to l minus rho hat times v hat. Okay, but how many vacancies is the house is the firm going to post? Well, you know that each vacancy is filled with a certain probability, the recruiting probability, which we denoted by uh, q hat. So if you want to have l uh, to be able to attract and uh, hire l workers you know that the number of vacancies that you have to post is L over um, Q hat. So we can replace V hat here by L over Q hat of theta, where you remember that Q hat of theta that we have here, this is our recruiting probability. That is, it's a probability that a vacancy is actually filled. Um, so L over Q hat, it's the expected number of vacancies that you want to post to be able uh, that to recruit actually L uh, worker as a firm. So then what we can do here, we can just um, <coughs> collect all the terms that are in front of L. So we have that N is equal to Q hat of theta minus L over Q hat of theta times L. So here I've just collected the one and the, uh, oh, sorry, uh, here it's a row. I've collected the one that we have in front of L and the row hat and the one over uh, Q hat of theta. And so this I can rewrite it as L is equal to Q hat of theta divided by Q hat of theta minus rho hat times n. Um, so here again, because n will be the number of uh, producers, which is really what the firm will care about, because the number of producers will determine how much uh, capacity the firm can build up, how many services they could possibly produce. So I'm trying to uh, relate n to l. And then, of course, uh, q hat minus rho hat, that's less than q hat. So this a uh, factor in front of n is bigger than 1, so we can rewrite this as L is equal to 1 plus rho hat over q hat minus rho hat times n. Uh, and this thing here, rho hat over q hat minus rho hat, this is what I'm going to call This is tau hat of theta. And this is what we call the matching wedge, the labor market uh, matching wedge. And because it dictates the gap between the number of producers n. and the number of employees. So we can rewrite this as L is 1 plus tau hat of theta times n. <coughs> well, tau hat of theta is our matching wedge. Uh, and so what is the interpretation of uh, the matching wedge? So the matching wedge is uh, <coughs> it's the number of recruiters that the firms need to employ per producers. So it's the number of recruiters that has to be on the firm payroll per uh, producer, so to support the number of vacancies that are required to make sure that the firm hire uh, one producer. And so, and then, you know, this number is going to scale up linearly with the number of producers. So if you have 10 producers, well, you need 10 times uh, tau hat uh, recruiter. So it's just, it's basically a recruiter, uh, it's number of recruiter per producer. And, and this is going to show up, uh, of course, it's going to show up in the firm's problem because 
the number of recruiters that the firm need to employ is going to be determined by that uh, matching wage. Uh, this, you know, another way to say it is that this is also a ratio between the number of recruiters and number of producers in the firm. It's also the recruiter and producer ratio in your firm. Uh, this is exactly the same. And that's going to matter, uh, that's going to enter, of course, in a critical way in the firm problem. The, basically, the bigger this uh, matching wage, the height of theta, the more, wh why would this, you know, you can see that the property of tau height of theta are exactly the same as the property of the matching wage of the product market tau of x. You can see that because q hat of theta here is uh, decreasing in theta, tau hat of theta uh, is increasing in theta. Uh, so these are exactly the same properties as for uh, tau x. So what that means is that when your labor market is tighter, the recruiting probability is lower. You know, each vacancy is less uh, successful, is less likely to, to yield uh, higher and as a result for a given number of producers firms have to post more vacancies and therefore they have to employ more recruiters because the cost per vacancy is fixed um, so when you have a tighter market labor market the labor market uh, matching wage is bigger uh, and so it becomes more expensive for firms to hire producers because they have to hire many more recruiters uh, on the side uh, so that is going to be uh, increasing like this uh, and something I should say which is that there will also be a maximum tightness at which tau hat becomes infinite. <coughs> so we should also introduce that tightness. So, oops. Uh, so tau hat of theta, what we said is that <coughs> It's of course positive, it's increasing in theta, and it's defined on zero theta m, where uh, theta m is such that q hat of theta m is equal to rho, uh, and the limit of tau hat of theta, when theta goes to theta m, that's going to be infinite. So basically the function tau hat uh, is going to look exactly like this, and this is going to look exactly like the function tau on the product market. So <clears throat> we'll have zero here. We have theta on the horizontal axis. We have theta m here. <coughs> All right, and uh, what I should say also is that at zero, tau hat of zero is going to be rho hat divided by q hat at zero, that's just one. Uh, when tightness is zero, all vacancies are filled with probability one over rho hat. And therefore, uh, if I put tau hat of theta on my vertical axis, I will start here at rho hat over 1 minus rho hat, then I'm going to be increasing, and then I'm going to go to infinity here when theta goes to theta m. So that's our function, uh, that's tau hat of theta here. It's an increasing function, and it goes to infinity at theta m. And so this tau hat of theta really captures the cost of recruiting for firms.